Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Movie Feuds. Now, we've had some requests uh, to review Captain America. Well, just one. Oh, from me, yeah, yes. Yeah, well, I guess. Um, so we're actually gonna do this review now. We dressed up in our, in our blue. Um, we were gonna, I was I gonna do blue, he was gonna do red and white, but that didn't Stupid work out. Stupid either way. So get your Captain America shields up, because we're gonna throw a lot of shit at you. There, you swore. Like us. Subscribe. C Cub is correct, that's what I'm calling you now. Because when I saw that it was 79% on Rotten Tomatoes, I thought to myself, this needs to be reviewed by professionals. And then by me and you. You've been telling me to watch this movie for quite some time, and to be honest, I caught it on a Netflix Instastream, so. Instastream. Yeah, that's what I call it. Okay. Did you know this movie ends twice? Once at the 45 minute mark, and once about two hours. Hmm. It ended three times for me, because when I watched it on Netflix Instastream, I oh, couldn't get shorter. through it. Yeah, I couldn't get through it. It was that bad. I'm not actually too familiar with Chris Evans' work. Uh, I know him as the Human Torch in Fantastic Four. That's all you. That's really um, it. But that's really it. I thought he did a decent job. He was the only character in the entire movie that had any type of memorable lines whatsoever. That's a blanket statement that I'm going to stick yeah, to. Yeah, I'm <laughs> not familiar with any lines of this <laughs> film. Yeah, Evans was fine. I, I don't know. I don't care. Hugo Weaving was also in it as Red Skull. Or as I maturely refer to him as period face. Ooh, nice. Thank you. Uh, well, then we have a, a host of cameos, and I just call them all the rest of the cast are just cameos because they only get about five minutes of screen time each. So Haley Jones. Atwell uh, makes her big screen debut. Okay. I don't think that's factually correct, but I don't know any other <laughs> movie she's in. <laughs> Tommy Lee Jones, uh, you well, know, obviously Samuel L. Jackson. Tommy Lee Jones in his game is going to whip you into shape. He's a drill sergeant, and he's acting again. Yeah. And Does then that sound like Tommy Lee Jones That's, even? that's spot on. Pretty good. That's spot on. I think the story had some potential, short for potential. Uh, you have a scrawny little guy, all he wants to do is join the army, fight for his country. That's all he wants to do, and with the help of his iron suit, he's able to accomplish you're, this. You're a power. nothing, that's Iron Man you're thinking of. Okay. Well, no, no, yeah, yeah, he's got, the, he turns green when he gets angry, and he's able that's to... That's the Incredible Hulk, I don't... He throws a hammer that has Thor. lightning Are you doing this on purpose? I am, because I don't think the film had potential. I think Captain America is a lame hero. And this film really only was made to serve the Avengers storyline. It's hard to argue, but I'm going to. Feuding. What I was getting at is that this, this kind of has potential in the timepiece. War movies always have kind of an interesting story, um, but however, I think this one took a little too far. The entire film seemed like a early 1900s wartime propaganda, it was just campy action. It was really campy. Adam, I didn't know if you knew this, but my great-grandpa in the 40s actually was in a uh, a wartime video. I already, I already know where this is going. Let I me guess. You I look have. just like your grandpa. We have footage. In fact, you're wearing the same shirt today as your grandpa wore in the 1940s. It's, it's uh, strange to say that we did look very, very similar to each other. Um, you know, some people say that I am a mere image of him. Just roll the joke. So. Just roll it. Yes, choose from the Army's big three. Only the Army lets you choose. One, the job training you want. Or two, the travel you want. Or three, the combat branch you want before you enlist. Make your own breaks in today's Army. Choose from the big three before you enlist. See your Army recruiter tomorrow. Well, I think that showed a lot of courage uh, oh. and patriotism. It was a tough time back then. It looked like a lot of inbreeding. Well, I don't think I that's mean, fair, you know? I don't think that's I think fair it's accurate, though. Uh, I made my own propaganda film uh, for a future war when we invade Canada, and let's, wow, let's run this that. now. Yeah, if I could get this. Taylor to put that up on the projector. Yeah. Oh, hey, I didn't hear you come in. Do you hate Canada as much as I do? Do you like the smell of a hot dog on a hot summer day? Do you like John Mellencamp or Bon Jovi? Of course you do. Do you like fresh cut flowers? Do you like your wife? Do you like watching a bear catch a salmon from a stream with his bare teeth or his paw? Did you ever want to be a bird of prey, like an eagle, and fight a hawk, and catch your food with your claws? So if you like all these things, then by God, you're an American, and that qualifies you to join the army and fight those dirty Canucks. I'll see you on the battlefield. The pacing is miserable. A notable scene for me was when Captain America's in the war room, and they're trying to figure out how to break into this impenetrable fortress by uh, period phase. And Captain America's like, hang on, yep. Yes, I have it. And then it jump cuts to him just driving through the base in his motorcycle. There was a ton of like assumed instances where... Usually there's like a creative strategy, but no, it's just him driving with the shield. Yeah. 
The first thing that threw me off was the time period, you know, the 1940s, and all of a sudden they have this technology that create the titanium shield that he uses, and then the blue plasma thing. It just disintegrates people, and nobody's like, hey, you know, it's 1942, but that's cool. Just plasma disintegrates all my buddies. There was a lot they could have done with 1942. We're talking about the year of Starbucks coming into its own, the fall of the Berlin Wall. I mean, all walls came down. Pink Floyd dropped its album off the wall, or the wall for where the are you right now? Where are you? I don't know. I never know. You win wars with guts. Grenade! Get away! Get back! The dummy grenade. We haven't feuded in a while. But it's not our fault that Hollywood keeps putting out movies so bad that Corey doesn't even like them. Wow. With that in mind, I'm going to okay. give you my review. Four Human Torches out of 24. That's a rating, not a review. OK. I had zero expectations for this film. It met every single one of them. Uh, I knew it was going to suck. It did. I had to stop it once because I thought it ended. It didn't. It kind of did. I'm giving it two. Red, white, and blue star shields out of 11. Okay. Hey! You're late. Oh, nobody's perfect. We just played some clips, so you can roll us out if you want. Good. Uh, more news reviews. This is the movie Might I just say, I wanted this movie to red, white, and blow me away, but I, it didn't. You didn't get there. I wanted red, red, white, and blue me away, yeah. but that doesn't you work. You even practiced. I did. Hey, Adam, actually. Oh, uh, hey. <laughs> didn't see you over there. Where did you come in? Look, I think this. Look. look. Listen. Listen. Idiots. So if you like all these things, and I think you do, well, then by God, that makes you an army man. Or woman. But we don't allow women in the army. <laughs> Hugo Weaving's also there as Red Skull, or as I maturely refer to him, a period face. Yeah. <laughs>